Second semester already, Mr. Z. I can't believe it. This year is really going by fast. Oh, amazing. So we're going to start is. out here with Chapter 6, Weathering and Erosion. In this video, we're going to focus in on one particular type of weathering, and that's going to be mechanical weathering. So we have how many learning targets on this one? Uh, we have four learning targets, and they're the first four listed right at the beginning of your packet. So make sure that you... Uh, take a look at those um, before the video and then also revisit those after the video and after the mastery check to see where you're at on those. Okay, let's start out with some basic definitions. If you want to flip ahead to the next slide, perfect. So we've got basic definitions of three of the terms, weathering, erosion, and mass wasting. Mm -hmm. We're going to use these terms very specifically so it's important that you know what the defin definitions are. So weathering is the in-place breakdown of earth materials. That means where they are, they break down into something else, whether that's by chemical or mechanical means. Yeah. What about erosion? Uh, erosion, well, we're taking those materials and we're moving them in some way, either by wind or by water or by ice. And when we talk about ice, uh, we also include uh, glaciers as well and glaciation because that also moves a lot of Earth's material. And then we have mass wasting, which is an interesting term, but all it really means is that we're moving those Earth materials downslope under the influence of gravity. So be exactly. careful as we use those terms throughout this video. Let's move on to the next slide. Right, why does ice float? Huh, I just had a Coke earlier today and put some ice in there and it was floating. I'm sure every one of us have seen that before. Okay. So this is a question I think we're gonna leave out there for students to think about as we go through this section. But it's going to come back a lot. When we mm -hmm. talk about frost wedging, when we talk about Definitely. various types of weathering, we're going to be talking about the impact of water. So think about water in its various stages, phases, and its properties it's solid, like, or gas phases. as we go through this. But let's think about what ice floats a little bit as we move through this. Okay. okay. Potholes. I'm familiar with those. I'm sure our students are too. Flat tires, busted rims, broken axles, you name it, potholes are usually the culprit there. And potholes are a great analogy for something we're going to spend a lot of time on this chapter, and that's frost wedging. Exactly. So we've got a YouTube video here. It's only about a minute and a half. It's a good and we're one. We're going to hop out and watch it. We'll watch it inside of this video so you can make sure that you see it. So here we go with the video. Don't let the sunshine fool you this time of year. <laughs> potholes are popping up again. Oh, gosh. We always hear about the freeze and thaw being to blame. But what exactly does that mean? Well, new at 6, we sent Weather Watch 4 meteorologist Ray Petlin to the Carnegie Science Center to find out. Enjoy. Well, we started this week off rather cold. Not liquid nitrogen cold, but cold enough for us. It was in the single digits on Tuesday morning. Today, we find our temperatures in the 50s, and it wreaks havoc on water, this freezing and thawing. And this is also what wreaks havoc this time of year on some of the roadways, as this freeze and thaw cycle is what makes potholes. So we came to the Carnegie Science Center to find out more about pothole science. Most substances um, actually contract, but water is very unique and uncommon. So what happens when water freezes, it actually expands. So we're going to take a water bottle filled with some liquid nitrogen and toss it in a bucket of really hot water, and we'll see what happens when the two combine. Well, this is what hitting a pothole may feel like. It's a bit of an extreme example since the expansion happened so fast, making that explosion. Pothole formation does take quite a bit more time, but can make for an extreme commute. Water actually expands when it freezes. So we took a full bottle of water and we placed it in liquid nitrogen. We find that the water actually expands when it freezes. And what we end up with is ice, which actually then breaks the water bottle because that water has expanded. So just as we demonstrated, as water freezes and expands, it breaks things apart, much like this water bottle, and much like the roads do this time of year around Pittsburgh. Now, as these cracks break open and more water gets in, the process continues and actually continues to get worse. So as you continue to see the freezing and the thawing take place, plan on more potholes to be on that commute. I'm WeatherWatch 4 meteorologist Ray Petlin for Channel 4 Action News. All right, we're back. What a great video that was, Ms. Yeah, Luan. Really timely, especially given the temperatures that we're supposed to be experiencing here. Yeah, week. actually, uh, Pretty cold. when you're watching this video, it'll be like close to zero outside. Could be. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to put this into action right away and start to think about frost wedging and how frost wedging actually takes place. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the diagram that we've got up here. There we go. And we've got this nice little cliff set up here, but 
what this diagram is showing us is how this cliff is actually formed from mm -hmm. the side of a mountain and how it continues to to form. Uh -huh. So in the little box here, it's showing us a cartoon of some rock, and the rock had some cracks in it. Yeah. And what happened when the rain filled in those cracks, Mr. Z? Well, the, the water filled in those cracks, and then it seems that the water froze, and, and when it did freeze, it expanded, and those cracks got wider and wider over time. So that's just like the bottle of water that they froze, that they exactly. showed. Exactly. And it's just the same as a pothole forming, mm -hmm. only this is a natural rock surface. Exactly. And you've got rock breaking away from it because that water expands when it freezes. So let's yep. fill in the blanks here for the students. So All we right. have water is blank mm -hmm. dense at 3 degrees C. It is most dense. Most dense at 3 degrees C. And ice is, is it less dense or more dense than water? Well, ice floats. Floats. So anything that floats, it's definitely going to be less dense than, than water. Um, and that ice would expand a, and it would occupy a greater, greater volume. volume. Right, greater volume. Yeah. So when water freezes, it, is it expanding? Definitely. And, and then water seeps down into a crack. When it freezes, it... Expands. Expands again. Yep. Sure. Forcing the crack to open wider like we just saw in this cartoon right. figure here. And then if it froze again, it would crack open wider. Exactly. And that process is going to continue until it breaks the piece yeah. of rock off. Freezing, thawing, freezing, thawing, etc. back and forth until um, it just breaks apart. And that's weathering because it's happening in that location. Mm -hmm. Not erosion or mass wasting, that's weathering. Yeah, it hasn't moved yet. Okay. Right. And then um, failure may occur and cause... Uh, the broken off materials to fall down slope, right? Um, right, and frost wedging, which is what this process is, is most common in areas where there's a daily freeze and thaw cycle, like often there is here in the winter. Exactly. It gets warm enough during the day for the water to melt. Mm -hmm. It freezes at night. Yep. It melts during the day. It refreezes at night. So you have this continued constant. Water Freezing seeping in, in You're right. cracking it wider, cracking it wider, cracking it wider every night. Okay, great. Okay. So that's frost wedging. Yep. Excellent. Let's go on. So now we've got another area in this picture where frost action or frost wedging is really going to impact the amount of weathering that's occurring. Yeah. So it's happening in the uppermost few centimeters because that's what's exposed and has cracks and the rainwater sure. or snow melt can seep into that, right? And we have the lower temperatures in that area, so we are going to get the water to freeze, expand, and then thaw and then refreeze again. And this is mostly low latitudes and high altitudes where mm -hmm. we've got this daily freeze-thaw cycle. And it's most significant in rocks that are fissile or porous, so rocks yeah. that will allow that water to soak in. into them to begin sure. with. Good. So here's an example showing a picture of the Sierra Nevadas out in the western part of the United States. And we have a question here. Yeah. What happens to the rock materials that break off, and what do those pieces form? So hmm. the rock materials that break off are going to undergo mass wasting. Yeah, They're going to fall down slope by gravity. Exactly. So gravity is influencing those, so we're bringing back that term from the first slide, right. uh, and that's mass wasting. Okay, and that slope that forms where all those chunks are piled up at the base of that mountain mm -hmm. or base of that cliff is called a talus slope. Got it. So students, that's talus, T-A-L-U-S. You want to put that in your notes. Ready to go on to the next oh, slide? Oh yeah, I'm ready. Alright, let's go. All right, so next. now we've got another type of weathering that is what we're going to end up calling mechanical weathering. Mm -hmm. So this is the second type of mechanical weathering. And this is a weathering called exfoliation or dilatation. Good. Dilatation. Okay. Want to explain how that happens? Well, uh, typically you'll have like a large piece of, of granite, a dome, granite dome that formed underneath the surface of the earth. Mm -hmm. And then it was slowly uplifted. And as it reached the surface, there wasn't as much pressure on that, uh, on that granite dome uh, as there was before. So it slowly begins to expand. And then the I don't want to say layers, but the but the topmost surface of that granite begins to crack or break because the granite underneath it is starting to expand. Right. All right, so you get a bunch of different cracks, and um, we do have some pictures coming up in the slides where we can see that a little bit easier. So if we were going to break this down into steps, we could do that. And we could think about what's happening here or shown here in this picture. Yeah. So you've got 
the batholith for stock, some sure. large igneous body that's formed underground. Some intrusion, yeah. Erosion and uplift. Uh huh. And then that unloading causes that material to expand mm -hmm. and causes fractures and cracks. Yep. Which is the weathering part of it. Yep. And then that material might move down slope in a mass wasting event by gravity, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, cool. So what we see when we see surfaces that have been exfoliated, uh -huh. a lot of times it is granite. And you're going to look for these smooth granite slopes that you can see just some layers that look like they peeled off partially. But you're looking for that nice smooth surface of granite. Yeah. Very characteristic of that type of weathering. Okay, so we've talked about the different types of mechanical weathering, mm -hmm. and we're going to go on for the next video to talk about chemical weathering, but a couple things we can do to kind of bridge between those two is sure. to say that chemical weathering can only occur on the exposed surfaces. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Right? And mechanical weathering is taking these pieces, right, they could be large pieces, and breaking them into smaller pieces. All right, that's what mechanical weathering is going to do. It doesn't change anything chemically. It just breaks something into smaller pieces, but it's still chemically the same. And when it breaks it into smaller pieces, there's more surface area exposed. Exactly. So that's going to have an impact on chemical weathering. Because more chemical weathering can take place on more of the surface. It can break it down even further. Perfect. All right, so here's the point where you guys want to jump back to your class website and go ahead and take that mastery quiz. Um, get it done before class tomorrow, and we'll see you in class. Yeah, all right. And be sure to go look at those learning targets as well. Bye, guys. Bye.